Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be taking the boat out and showing you the easiest way to catch some big smallmouth bass. It's a super simple technique. We're going to break it all down in today's video so stay tuned and let's get right into it. All right so before we head out on the water we're actually going to talk about our gear uh, but that we're going to be using out on the water today. Um, I'm going to be using it on a bait caster but we're also going to talk about a spinning rod that I have sitting right here as well uh, because as an easy technique, it should be able to be fished on both. So anybody of any skill level should be able to do this technique. Starting with this one right here, this is gonna be my favorite. If you're a little bit more of an advanced angler, I prefer to do this on a bait caster uh, because it allows me to go up in line size a little bit and have a little bit more backbone to the fish. Uh, but basically what I use for my rod and reel setup here, this is the Cashin Icon topwater and jerkbait rod. This one is the six foot nine extra fast medium power rod. Uh, it's basically made for jerkbait fishing, but it makes an excellent swimbait rod as well when you're using these smaller finesse swimbaits like this. Um, that I pair up with, I have an SLX DC from Shimano on here. You can use whatever reel you want. I just like one with a seven gear ratio because I wanna be able to keep up with those fish when they bite it and get them, a lot of times they'll bite it and push the bait towards you. So you'll need to reel up your slack and get a good hook set on those fish. Um, so that's why I like the faster gear ratio. I can always force myself to reel slower. Um, and then this rod has just a little bit of backbone to stick those fish, but it has that soft tip so they can get the bait all the way into their mouth. And then I'm gonna run straight 12 pound test fluorocarbon on this setup here. This, I like going with the bait caster so I can use the straight fluorocarbon so that my line sinks and I can get that direct connection to my bait down in the water since I want this to stay on the bottom. Um, so that's gonna be the advantage with going with a bait caster. Talking with the spinning rod here, there's a couple advantages actually to go with a spinning rod as well and that's why I use them both equally. Um, this one, I have a drop shot rigged up on here right now because that's what I was fishing with on here last but this is the cash and core spinning rod it's a seven foot medium power fast action uh, basically the same thing as that but three inches longer and a fast tip rather than an extra fast tip so same basically no matter whether you pick a casting or spinning rod you want that medium power that's what you're looking for um, and then I pair this up with a Shimano Sedona 2500. I put 15 pound test lime green braid on there and then eight pound test fluorocarbon leader um, the difference between the casting and the spinning rod, you're going to get a much easier use here. It's easier to cast and stuff like that for anybody that can't cast a bait caster right now. Um, so you can still fish this technique even if you can't do that. But I spool mine with braid. You could spool it with straight fluorocarbon, you'd be fine, but you get a lot more line twist using a spinning reel like that. So I use braid. That's gonna keep your bait, it's gonna create an arc in your line and you're not gonna get a direct connection to your bait down there on the bottom. But compared with the bait caster, your spinning reel has a six gear ratio rather than a seven. So the six gear ratio is actually gonna force you to reel your bait slower, even though you might not think you're doing it, uh, just because the speed, if you reeled the exact same speed on both of these reels, this is gonna pick up less line. So it'll force you to keep your bait on the bottom, which will in turn get you more bites. So there's an advantage and disadvantage to using each of these rods. Um, you can get around either one, just pick the one that you're most comfortable with, use that one, and I promise you'll catch a ton of fish. And real fast, let's run through the actual setup of this bait right here. Um, I'm going to be using the Pulse Fish Lures Jig Head. I've used this one a bunch on the channel. My code is NQF10. You can save 10% on your order if you want to get any of these jig heads after the video. Um, I firmly believe these are the best jig heads for finesse swim bait fishing on the market. I know I am sponsored by them, but I've used these jig heads even when I'm not sponsored by them that I've poured my own. I've done all kinds of stuff that are very similar to this. A few advantages to this jig head, you're going to have that screw lock keeper to keep your bait on there forever and not have to go through a bunch of baits so you're going to save money on baits it and then it has the same gamagatsu hook that i like to put in my own ball head jigs but more importantly it has a keel on the head which is going to keep your bait upright and swimming properly down there on the bottom i pretty much exclusively use the quarter ounce size unless i need to get just a little bit deeper then i'll go to the three eighths but i almost always use that quarter ounce size any color works um, just grab a couple of those and you'll be good to go and then the swim bait trailer that I put on here is just the Divine 3.2 swim bait. Um, I've talked about this one again on the channel a bunch as well. This one's super effective over some of the other ones, like even the 3.8 Divine. The difference between this and the 3.8 Divine is that there's less plastic involved in this bait. So it actually makes it a little bit softer and swims better at slower speeds. When you're gonna reel this bait really slowly, you need something that swims really good at slow speeds. And you can see I'm barely shaking this thing and the tail is just wiggling all around. 
round, that's what you're looking for in a swim bait. You don't want one that is too stiff. You don't have to use the six sense ones, but if you pick a swim bait, make sure you pick one that is very soft and supple and will swim very good at slow speeds and you'll be good to go. This one, again, I'll use white in some dirtier water. This is Ghost Ice Minnow, or I'll use like Pro Blue or a natural shad color like that if the water's a little bit cleaner. And those are really the only two colors I fish with. So now that we got the setup dialed in, let's head out on the boat and do the fun part, which is actually catching some of these fish. So let's get out there and catch some big smallmouth. All right, so now that we talked about this swim bait rig, let's go ahead and fish this thing around and see if we can catch us a couple fish and show you really how easy it is to catch fish with a swim bait. Um, I've been loving this finesse swim bait. If you've been watching the channel for some time, you know how much I do love this bait, how effective it is. Uh, but we're gonna show you today and hopefully catch us some big smallmouth bass on it, fishing it in the river here. Uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, it truly is a very, very easy technique. Anybody can do this, any skill level, like we talked about, it's nothing complicated. We're gonna ease up here a little bit to where I think the fish are actually gonna be, which is up here. Um, but basically all we're gonna do is cast this thing out and wind it back in, and there's nothing more to it than that. But we'll show you as we're actually fishing it here, uh, little things you can do to catch more fish and all that kind of stuff. So let's ease up here and see what we can get. So all we're gonna do is make a really long cast right where we think the fish are gonna be. If you have braid on your spinning rod, it's a little bit easier to tell. You'll watch your braid as it goes down. That's why I use that high-vis braid. Uh, but using my fluorocarbon here, I'm just gonna watch it and let it sink to the bottom. I can see my bait just hit the bottom there. And then I'll just go ahead and start a slow retrieve, making sure I feel my bait bumping into the bottom consistently and staying down there if the fish are on the bottom. If you have suspended fish, you can reel it up a little higher in the water column. But if you know those fish are on the bottom, I crawl this thing as slow as I can on the bottom just like this and keep that bait down there in the strike zone as long as possible. And you can see I'm bouncing it on some rocks right there. And I actually got it hung up, which is fine. Sometimes they don't come out. That's the problem with the open hook, but sometimes they will, but we'll see what we can do here. But if you're not getting hung up, then your bait is not staying on the bottom where it's supposed to be. And you probably weren't getting as many bites as you're supposed to be getting. So we're gonna get this guy out and get back to fishing. And right there is why I like that light wire hook. You can see I bent that hook out. Um, but if you're not in a tournament or just fun fishing, it's really no big deal. I'll just take a pair of pliers right here. Didn't lose my jig head, saved myself some money. I'll bend that right back. And now we're ready to fish again. So let's get back to it. And if you're getting hung up a lot, either lighten your jig head and it'll come up off the bottom just a little bit more or reel a little bit faster to keep your bait just a little bit up off the bottom. But for right now, we're gonna try and crawl it slow and see what happens. There's one. He ate it and swam right towards me. You can see I kind of just pecked up my reel speed there. That's why I like that seven one to one. They eat it and they'll swim right towards you with it. So we got him, popped him right in the side, got him up here. Let's see if we can land him. There we go. Beautiful fat little fall smallmouth right there. We'll show you the hook set one more time. I'm sure we'll get another one here in just a second. Uh, but like I said, I just kind of reeled that into that fish, sweep my rod to the side. That light wire hook penetrates the fish really, really well. Uh, and you get him in the boat. So that's number one on the board right there. We're gonna get him back in the water. See if we can catch us another one. So like I said, all we were doing right there is just crawling that bait along the bottom. We're gonna bomb that thing back out there and we're gonna try that again. A lot of times with the bites are gonna feel like they're either gonna thump it one time and then it's just gonna get heavy or you'll feel them thump it and your line will go slack like you have nothing there and that's them swimming towards you. So we'll throw it out there. When you feel that thump, you don't want to immediately set the hook. Um, a lot of times you can pull the bait away from the fish when you do that and you might not get as good of a hook set. So a lot of times, like I did with that one there, I felt that thump. You could probably have seen my rod tip actually jump there. I felt him thump it, and as soon as I did that, I just kept reeling until I felt the weight of the fish. That means that thing has it all the way in his mouth, and then you can just sweep all the way through and fight him on the way to the boat. So let's see what we can do and see if we can get another one here. There's another one. That's a big one, I think. Again, I literally felt him thump it, and then I just felt the weight load up after that. And you can see, even with that light wire hook, you could put some pressure on these fish, they don't come off. Um, it's a lot of fun catching them. Let's see if we can get this one up in the boat. He's not as big as I thought he was. He's fighting hard, which is fun. Come here, buddy. 
He's a little guy. He fought real hard. All right, and just like that, that's how easy it is to catch fish on a swim bait. It literally, anybody, any skill level, any age can do this. You throw it out there, you wind it in. A lot of times the fish practically hook themselves. I never really set the hook hard or anything like that. Get those light wire hooks, it'll penetrate really easily. That's a beautiful fish right there. We're gonna get him back in the water, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check this one out, talking more about that finesse swim bait, how to rig it up and stuff like that. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.